Hey everybody, it's Kenneth Ramon uh, yet again in the Cruiser Bruiser. I uh, just wanted to give you guys a quick little update video on my recent physical media pickups. Uh, got some movies here, so you're going to see some DVDs, got some CDs, even a cassette. So uh, yeah, I got uh, quite a bit of stuff that I picked up in the past month or so and just wanted to share with you guys uh, what I did pick up and uh, some of these I did uh, watch and listen to, so I just wanted to share my thoughts on them and just wanted to share with you guys uh, what I've added to the collection and if you see these titles at your local like Walmarts or Big Lots I even got some online purchases uh, just let me know if you guys would be interested in picking these up at your stores and if you've seen them and what you guys thought of these titles but anyways you guys yeah let's get to it so I always try to give you guys like a little adventure video of me actually going to the store and finding these things you know live as it happens but you know sometimes you know I'll just go to the store get get some groceries and unexpectedly I'll go to the movie section and find something that I really do like and you know I just wasn't expecting to find it so uh, here's one in that case uh, I went to Walmart recently a few days ago actually and then I was looking through the five dollar movie bin and I came across this title Candyman and you guys are actually making a new Candyman coming soon I think this year in September I believe so uh, I still hadn't seen the original believe it or not I know it's considered a classic but I still hadn't seen this one and I definitely wanted to see it especially because of the new one coming out and you know for the longest time you know my mom God rest her soul uh, she was telling me about this movie and how she saw it when it first came out at a drive-in movie theater and she said it was like the creepiest experience ever and uh, so yeah I definitely to give this a watch I watched it a couple days ago and you know you guys like for my personal taste it wasn't like the scariest movie I guess for its time it was like considered really scary but uh, I will say I really did enjoy like the urban legend aspect of this and uh, as like the movie goes uh, you say the candy man's name five times and then he appears and then you know kills everybody um, but like there's like a whole urban legend behind it and if you haven't seen this uh, I will recommend it just for that urban legend alone I felt like that was really interesting like that was a new take on horror especially for its time I this was like was this 1992 yeah definitely a new take on horror for its time for sure and uh but i will say like for the most part i felt like this movie was kind of gross it was more gross than it was scary to me i guess you you could see like there's the candy man with the bees coming out of his mouth and i'm like ugh. like to me that's just gross that's not scary at all i'm just like disgusted really and then there's like this scene where like there's like this uh mystery scene of like who killed who and um, uh, but there's like a, a dog that's lying dead on the floor with its head cut off. It's like a severed head just sitting there. It's a, a Rottweiler's head. I'm just like, like really? I just, I thought it was like the grossest thing ever. But like I could see how some people would just be uncomfortable by it. And maybe that causes some fear in them. But to me, I was just like, gosh, man, this is, ugh. like I just ate really. <laughs> you know, I'm eating popcorn. I'm just all nauseous watching this movie. I will say this this movie's all right. This movie, you know, I give it a B. You know, maybe I need to watch it again, but uh, I'm gonna give it another watch. But for five bucks to just find this randomly at the Walmart five dollar movie bin, I say it's definitely worth it. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Okay, you guys. Well, this next movie, I'm really happy to add to the collection, and I'm excited to share a little bit about it with you guys. As you guys know, I'm a huge uh, found footage movie buff and I had heard so many great things about this next movie and I couldn't find it anywhere. I couldn't find it at my thrift stores, couldn't find it at Walmart, so I just had to pick it up online. But this is called As Above, So Below and it's about uh, these explorers that venture out into Paris uh, into the catacombs and there's this whole like history behind this location and there's said to be treasure in there so uh, these explorers they kind of like go underground in these tunnels and it gets very dirty they get muddy and they don't even care they just they're so determined in finding the treasure and learning more about the history like here you go you guys in the back you could see a little bit more of <laughs> like how dirty and muddy everybody gets look at that but yeah no this movie was really really cool I will say as a found footage movie nut I mean it it does feel like it was filmed by like an actual movie studio with actually 
really good actors. Like, it doesn't feel like a movie where, you know, explorers actually take a, a camcorder and actually go to this place. It feels like a, a movie that's made with actors. It doesn't have that same feel like the Blair Witch Project gave me. And that movie is very hard to top. Like, I know that Paranormal Activity tried. They came very close, and so did Phoenix Forgotten. That's a really good one. But for the most part, it's very, very hard to do, like, a found footage movie right. Like, when I saw Blair Witch Project when I was nine, okay, I thought the thing was real. I was wondering what happened to these people. They have to be out in the woods somewhere. You know, maybe they died, but why can't we find their bodies? It's been 20 years and they're still missing. Like, I actually thought it was real, okay? But, uh, this movie doesn't really have that same feel, okay? It feels like a movie, but I will say there are aspects of this that take that found footage genre to the next level, uh, especially with the shakiness of the camera. Like, it, there's parts of this movie that goes, like, really fast in the tunnel, like, it's like zoom, like, it feels like you're on a roller coaster, kind of, and I really did enjoy that. I love the ending of this movie. I definitely did not expect the ending, and I won't spoil it, because I really want you guys to watch this movie. I will give this movie an 8 out of 10, and if you come across this movie anywhere, definitely pick it up. I think I, I spent maybe 6 bucks on this. Definitely worth it. Pick it up, you guys. It's really good. I have to say I'm so sorry for the wind, you guys. I mean, I did not expect this. I'm actually happy to have some wind. It's been 118 degrees out where I live, so it's so good to get a nice breeze, finally. But yeah, you guys, uh, let me share the next movie with you. I found this one at the $5 movie bin at Walmart, and I heard great things, so I definitely had to pick it up, and it's John Travolta and The Fanatic. And this movie uh, stars uh, John Travolta. He plays like this obsessive fan of this actor, and he uh, just needs to get that autograph. Like he's like the 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 white well, this uh, celebrity, and he really wants this autograph. And uh, he goes just so far in just trying to get this guy's autograph. Like he meets him at a meet and greet, and he kind of has like this this odd situation, this odd encounter uh, with this celebrity and uh, he just, he never forgets that. He never forgets this weird encounter so then he goes and tracks him down online, finds out where this celebrity lives and then he like actually goes out to their house. I'm like, God, this guy's crazy. This guy's crazy. That's not how you ask for an autograph, bro. But anyways, uh, this movie was very unsettling. I felt very uncomfortable watching it. And uh, that's kind of the point, right? It succeeds in what it tries to do and kind of reminds me of like One Hour Photo with Robin Williams. And I feel that John Travolta really uh, does a great job in portraying like a an obsessive character and uh, definitely recommend this movie if you see it in the five dollar movie bin but as for me personally I don't know if I could watch this again it was very very uncomfortable uh, the endings really cool I really did enjoy the ending and uh, how everything turned out but like just getting there getting there is just such a roller coaster you're just like literally biting your nails like oh my gosh what's with this guy yeah that is not how you ask for an autograph but anyways you guys uh this is a cool movie definitely check it out the fanatic john travolta worth five bucks Alrighty, and this next movie I have still yet to see and you guys know me I like to go into movies with an open mind. I try to know a little 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 as possible But uh, this movie is called bombshell and I also found this at the five dollar movie bin at Walmart And I just saw the cast I look at the cast alone got Charlize Theron got uh, Nicole Kidman, Margot Robbie. I definitely had to pick this up just for the cast alone. And oh, also John Lithgow is also in this one, one of my favorite actors. So definitely wanted to pick it up for the cast alone. And seems like uh, this is a movie kind of like about sticking it to the man and also uh, kind of like overcoming a toxic environment and you know without getting like super political and I guess this would be like a civil rights issue but I'm definitely interested in movies like that so I definitely wanted to pick this one up and as far as I'm told the, the movie's just okay but uh, you know you can't go wrong with a cast like this so um, I don't know I have hopes I have hopes that this will be a really cool movie so definitely pick this one up for five bucks 
And then the next one is coming uh, from Big Lots. This is a, a $3 pickup from Big Lots. One of my personal favorites, childhood favorites. And that is the Flintstones in Viva Rock Vegas. And uh, at first I wasn't going to pick this one up because I already have this on VHS. And uh, I don't know, I'm weird like that. You know, when I already have a copy of it, no matter what format, I just, I don't feel the need to pick up another one. But in this case, you know, this is a really, a really good movie, a childhood favorite of mine that I just grew up watching. And, you know, I kind of wanted to have this on DVD anyway. So I, I felt for $3, it was worth a shot, you know. And um, with DVDs, I like uh, DVDs because they're portable. You know, I could put them in my laptop. I could take it outside and watch it. I could, you know, watch it anywhere, just lounge around and watch it. So I uh, definitely wanted to pick this one up. And, um, yeah, I highly recommend this one if you haven't seen it. You know, it's to me, it's a classic because I remember when it first came out, my grandmother recorded it on HBO when it first came out and I had it on VHS and I just get so nostalgic for this movie. I like it more than the John Goodman one, believe it or not. I grew up with both of them, but this is the one, I don't know why I have just so many great memories with this movie, watching it with my parents, watching it with my cousins, watching it by myself. I just love the Flintstones and I feel like we need a new Flintstones, you know, since they're rebooting everything let's do the Flintstones movie that would be really cool I feel like this generation needs a Flintstones movie so yeah you guys definitely wanted to pick this one up and uh, also similarly I picked up uh, King Kong versus Godzilla I say similarly uh, because this movie I do own on VHS already and I'm, I'm weird I'm weird I don't know like I I get like that I was like I already have it on VHS it still works do I have to buy the DVD do I have to buy it again and I get like that with like movies I record on TV too like I was like oh this came on TV I recorded it why do I need another copy but you know the movie buff in me like with favorites I definitely have to pick them up and have multiple formats but this is definitely the case uh, King Kong versus Godzilla man I just love the old school King Kong movies and look at the back you guys you got the the guy in the monkey suit they need to bring back visual effects like this this is come on you guys no more CGI this is what we need okay I mean this probably takes a lot more work than CGI than a guy just you know messing around on the, his computer imagine the guy in this movie like imagine it being really hot imagine it right now 118 degrees and you got a guy in the monkey suit man that is commitment and hard work and uh, it's very much appreciated for movie buffs like myself so uh anyways you guys i'm rambling but uh i definitely had to pick this one up the original king kong versus godzilla this is from the five dollar movie bin at walmart uh definitely definitely pick this one up you guys it's a classic Alrighty, you guys, before I get to these last couple pickups, I just want to thank you so much uh, for bearing with me in this crappy, crappy weather and still watching this video. Gosh, you guys are awesome. Uh, thank you so much. And if you're new to the channel, you like what you see, uh, feel free to subscribe. And um, if you're enjoying this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it, you guys. Thank you very much. All right, and uh, the next pickups, uh, this is another example, you guys. I have a copy of this on VHS, and I have, like, these wonderful memories with my parents just watching this on television, recording it. I don't know, I come from that generation where we just recorded movies on television and save them and watch them for later. You know, I just, I don't know. I kind of got in that habit, and I was like, well, why do I need to have an actual copy of it when I already have, you know, my own copy, you know, from my own year? But anyways, you know, you guys, I saw like the artwork and this has been out for a good year now and I've actually been thinking about it and thinking about it and I finally pulled the trigger and I picked up all of the Jaws movies, okay? All of them. And uh, they have a special going on right now. They've had it for a while, like I tell you, I had to think about it, but uh, it's $5 each movie and look, it comes in its own... Uh, 
personal cover. You don't have to like buy a box set and you know have like all the DVDs in one place. You could have its own very own uh, copy. And this is perfect for like autograph collectors like myself that just want to get specific actors and uh, people involved with the movie uh, just on one uh, separate project. Like this is perfect for autograph collectors. But yeah, this is the first Jaws right here. Here's the back. It got the second Jaws. I like this one. It was alright for a sequel. There's the back to that one. This one's a guilty pleasure, but I still liked it. Jaws 3. Jaws 3D. I have this one on VHS. I have one and three on VHS. And then the other two I, I don't have. I just have it recorded from television. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong with this nice artwork. I mean, look at that, you guys. I wonder who actually drew like the artwork for uh, Jaws. I'll have to research that. If they're still around, I would love to get their autograph. Imagine that. That would be really cool. But yeah, that's the one where they filmed in SeaWorld. I always loved that one. So cool. And uh, Jaws the Revenge. Everybody's favorite Jaws movie is Jaws the Revenge. I'm <laughs> just kidding. This is probably the worst Jaws movie, but probably the best artwork. I think this is my favorite artwork. Look at that. Yeah, at least they didn't go wrong with the artwork, right? <laughs> so yeah, you guys, uh, you know, for five bucks a movie, uh, yeah, I got them all. I got them all for 20 bucks, and I feel like that is worth it, and I'm so happy to have it. I'm so happy to finally have the Jaws DVDs in my collection. All right, so that completes the movie aspect for my physical media pickups this month. Uh, well, I guess this is movie related but I also picked up uh, the Cruella soundtrack on cassette. Now this is kind of weird and uh, it's weird to me that this was only offered on cassette. It was weird. I uh, I got like a, like it was like a promotional ad from Disney Emporium. Is that what they call it? Disney Mu Disney Music Emporium. I believe that's what the, what it's called. And I guess they were celebrating like uh, their 30th anniversary or something like that. And they were having 10% off on new music releases. And uh, I looked and this was offered. But this was like the only uh, format that they had available on that website. On that Disney Music Emporium. Uh, but yeah, I definitely had to pick this up. I I'm just kind of blown away that, um, that cassettes are back. Like, I thought people were joking. I thought they were kidding when they told me that. That, oh no, man. Yeah, cassettes. They're making a comeback. I thought they were joking. Like, I seriously did not think that cassettes were making a comeback. You know, I only bought cassettes because, you know, in the Cruiser Bruiser, the CD player went out. So that's all I have. I mean, it has to be pure nostalgia because the sound is so awful. I mean, you get that that noise in the background. What's it called? White noise? That's what I call it. Like, you hear that in the background of the tape and, like, the sound gets so muffled. You know, it's kind of like this video with the wind in the background. I'm sorry, you guys, but that's what I'm trying to say is, like, the sound quality is god-awful. But anyways, you guys, going back to uh, the actual album itself, this is amazing i've had it in the cruiser bruiser for a little while haven't taken it out but it's got a mix of like jazz and funk and some punk rock on the second side of this thing which i expected this to be full-blown punk rock like you know because look at the album artwork i mean come on that's a punk rock album right there kind of reminds me of uh miley cyrus's uh plastic hearts like i was expecting like a full-blown punk album with that cool awesome um album cover but uh you kind of get a mix and that's kind of the case here as well so like yeah the first half has more jazz stuff more uh more classic rock you got super tramp you got the bgs this is an old school bgs uh song right here this isn't a, like a disco bgs it's called whisper whisper i don't know it kind of like has like a old beatles type of sound so it must be like old school bgs before they went disco and it's got the doors on there and uh, it got the ohio players where you kind of funk it up a little it got ike and tina turner as well and then on the second half it really picks up on like the rock you got uh elo you know the elect 
electric uh, light orchestra then you got queen you know stone cold crazy then you gotta punk it up a little you got blondie one way or another the clash uh, should i stay or should i go and then my personal favorite i want to be your dog and now this song in particular Okay, now everybody knows that this song is by Iggy Pop and the Stooges and then Joan Jett covered it and Sid Vicious, Sid Vicious of the Sex Pistols covered it after. But uh, this cover is performed by John McCrae. I think I'm saying that right. But he's an actor in this movie. He plays the fashion designer in this movie. And I kid you not, you guys, if I didn't see his name here, I would have thought this was Joan Jett. Okay, I'm listening to it in the car and uh, the voice, it just sounds so much like Joan and the music in this, it, like, this is like the heaviest version I've ever heard of this song. It's definitely punk rock, okay? Like, I, I have to wonder who played on this cover because, like, the bass, the guitar, the tambourine, like, who, and even the producer, like, whoever produced this did a great job because you could hear everything so well in the mix. Like, nothing is buried, but, like, the bass. I love the bass. I wouldn't be surprised if, like, Jerry Only of the Misfits played on this song. So I'm very curious who played on this because it definitely has a Jerry Only sound, and I really do enjoy that. Now I know the majority of my subscribers are movie people, so I'm trying to keep, like, the, the music reviews to a minimum but you know I'm a music guy I'm a music guy so whenever I do music stuff I appreciate you guys for indulging me a little bit but uh, yeah so I also picked up uh, Modson his new CD uh, internet kill the rock star and uh, this album's been out for a while but this is like the first time that it's been released on a uh, physical media as an actual CD and I'm old school I have to have the hard copy and uh, this just came back uh, last month so just so happy to have it and it's a signed copy too he signed for the fans and you could tell it's totally legit got a hand signed sharpie right here so awesome and if you're into pop punk music i highly recommend you check this out like if you're in a blink 182 uh, all time low um all american rejects green day i say this is up your alley so yeah i would really recommend you guys check this album out i love every track on here all but one all but one but uh very very cool album i'm gonna do a a full-blown review on this one shortly because I just have to with this whole pop punk revival going on I have to add this one to the mix and uh, the next CD that I picked up I picked this one up at uh, my local Walmart Let me see if you guys can see that but yeah uh, this was $12 uh, but this is the new sticks album and I kind of have a soft spot for sticks I love the old stuff you know and uh, like, the last album was really good, too. It was called The Mission. I picked that CD up as well. But my beef with Styx is they got rid of the best songwriter in the band. His name is Dennis DeYoung. He wrote, you know, Mr. Roboto. He wrote Come Sell Away. And they're really missing that guy, in my opinion. They won't invite him back to the band. They say, no way, Jose. You're not coming back. I, I guess they have, like, a long future of bad blood, but... I saw these guys in concert, this version of Sticks, this version of Sticks, and it just isn't the same, man. They don't play Mr. Roboto, they don't play Babe I Love You, they don't play The Best of Times. When you don't play those songs, how could you call yourself Sticks? You're not Sticks, in my opinion. But uh, for the most part, in the studio, they still make decent music, and so I definitely had to pick this one up. Uh, this album's called Crash of the Crown. And there's the back of it. I haven't opened it up. Maybe it's got cool pictures inside too. But like I said, for the most part, I know you guys are movie people watching. But uh, some of you guys are music fans. So I do acknowledge that. And uh, I, I do like sticks. I like the old school sticks. So definitely wanted to pick this up. And maybe it's good. Maybe it's not. I don't know. It's classic rock, and it's worth a shot. <laughs> Alrighty, you guys, it's a wrap. Those are my pickups uh, for this month. Yeah, this month, you guys. That's where all my money's going. You guys, you guys are bad influences, okay? But anyways, you guys, uh, if you find anything cool at uh, your local Walmarts or Big Lots, you guys still... Uh, 
collect physical media, please let me know if you found anything cool. I'd love to hear about it in the comments section. And as always, you guys, just thank you so much for watching my videos. I appreciate all the support. Thank you so much. Kenneth Ramon. What does this button do? Signing off.